so friends today we will discuss very important topic that is tracheostomy 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 is made up of two words one is trachea another is stomy stoma we all know that it is a opening so this opening is created in the trachea this procedure is called as tracheostomy suppose this is the trachea and the procedure in which we create an opening in the anterior wall of the trachea this procedure is called as tracheostomy okay this is tracheostomy and we are why we are doing tracheostomy suppose there is a foreign body which is present in the upper respiratory tract because of the presence of the foreign body in the upper respiratory tract the air cannot pass through it and so the patient cannot breathe so to bypass this route we have to do the tracheostomy this is one indication for doing the tracheostomy so by doing the tracheostomy it provides the alternate pathway for breathing and further sometimes some individuals having the retained secretions in their lower respiratory tract for example there are secretions which are collected in the tracheo bronchial tree and because of this secretion the air cannot escape through this route and the patient cannot breathe so we do the tracheostomy and we remove these secretions and we improve the ventilation of the lungs so tracheostomy helps in clearing these secretions and you have to remember one point here that the most common indication previously was the presence of foreign body in the upper respiratory tract this is the most common indication for tracheostomy previously but now the most common indication is the presence of retained secretions retained secretions and this we see in those individuals who require the prolonged ventilation we see in the individuals who are admitted in the icu they require very very prolonged ventilation and because of they require the prolonged ventilation there are lots of secretion gets collected and such individuals in those individuals we do the tracheostomy so that we can regularly remove the secretions okay so the tracheostomy is a surgical procedure in which we create an opening in the anterior wall of the trachea to study our topic we divide the topic into various subtypes first we study what are the functions of the tracheostomy and then we study what are the indications of tracheostomy then we study what are the complications related with the tracheostomy and then we study what are the various types of tracheostomy what are the tracheostomy tubes and then we study a few mcq related our topic of tracheostomy let's study what are the functions of the tracheostomy to understand the functions of tracheostomy let's see the diagram again we already discussed one function is that it provides the alternate pathway for breathing we all discussed that point okay then it also helps in clearing the secretions this point we also discussed this point so first one function is provide the alternate path of breathing it helps in clearing the secretions okay sometimes we can also deliver the anesthesia it helps in delivering the anesthesia so this is another function of tracheostomy it helps in delivering the anesthesia so further suppose these are the alveoli so by doing the tracheostomy tracheostomy helps in improving the alveolar ventilation since if the air has to come from upper respiratory tract it takes a lot of time to come and the alveolar ventilation is not as effective as through tracheostomy route so another function is it improves the alveolar ventilation okay then this part is not taking part in air flow so it reduces the tracheostomy reduces the dead space as well this is another point you have to remember 
so to remember the functions of the tracheostomy you can simply remember a b c and d so the functions of the tracheostomy it improves the alveolar ventilation a means alveolar ventilation it improves the tracheostomy improves the alveolar ventilation and b means breathing since it provides the alternate pathway for breathing this is b c means it helps in clearing the tracheobronchial secretions we already discussed and d means it helps in delivering the anesthesia or it also reduces the dead space so the functions of the tracheostomy are a b c d simple and now we study what are the indications of the tracheostomy why are we doing the tracheostomy okay to understand the indications of the tracheostomy you first study a diagram suppose this is our brain and the brain having the very important respiratory center that control our respiration and these signals are sent to the respiratory tract through neural pathway and suppose this is the respiratory tract and these are the neural pathways that are sending the signal to the trachea or the respiratory pathway and this goes to our lower respiratory tract these are the lungs and we divide the indication one which are related to the problems with the brain another is which are affecting the neural pathway and one which are affecting the upper respiratory tract and fourth which are affecting the lower respiratory tract so to understand the indication you must understand this diagram the indication are divided 1 2 3 and 4 what could be the possible problems in the brain that lead to the indication for tracheostomy suppose if the vital centers are not working in patients with coma in patients with head injury and in individuals with cerebro vascular accidents okay in these individuals the respiratory center don't work well and the signals are not sent to the trachea and the patient cannot breathe well so in those individuals we have to do the urgent tracheostomy then if the brain is working well and but the signals are not reaching to the respiratory system and what are the conditions that are disturbing this neural pathway there are various conditions few conditions are like suppose the patient having the poliomyelitis and the uh, individuals with narcotic overdose and sometimes strychnine poisoning and sometimes tetanus these affect the neural pathway and the uh, because of which the patient cannot breathe and sometimes myasthenia gravis also block the neuromuscular junction and the signal cannot reach to the various muscle that are helping in the breathing process so we have to do the tracheostomy in, in these conditions so we study about this this now we what are the local causes the patient cannot breathe foreign body we already discussed if there is presence of foreign body the patient cannot breathe we have to do the tracheostomy and another thing if there is trauma trauma can cause the compression of the trachea and the patient cannot breathe so we have to do the tracheostomy when is trauma sometimes infections infections like tuberculosis like syphilis like diphtheria under these conditions the lot of exudation occur and the lumen of the trachea gets or the respiratory tract gets blocked and the individual cannot breathe so we have to do the tracheostomy and sometimes leo neoplastic growth like the neoplasms of the pharynx larynx can obstruct or sometimes the tumors that are obstructing the in the lower part of the tongue that can also affect the breathing process we have to do the tracheostomy and sometimes the congenital anomalies like we have the laryngeal webs are there that are obstruct the airway so we have to do the tracheostomy in those condition and so these are the upper respiratory tract problems that can obstruct the air flow sometimes the problems are related to the lower respiratory tract that helps in 
retaining the secretions lot of secretion get collected in the lower respiratory tract so we have to do the tricuspid and to remove this in order to remove these secretions there are various conditions one are copd patients with copd patients with bronchiectasis patients with emphysema and uh, we also have patients with chronic bronchitis and that's it and sometimes you have to remember one point that pneumothorax pneumothorax and uncomplicated bronchial asthma this is not an indication for doing the tracheostomy okay rather pneumothorax is the complication of the tracheostomy but it is not the indication for doing the tracheostomy neither the pneumothorax neither the uncomplicated bronchial asthma is an indication for tracheostomy these are not the indication this point you have to remember so to understand the indication of tracheostomy it is divided as the problems that are related with the brain problems that are disturbing the neural pathway there are certain local factors in the total fact local factor you also remember that trauma can cause the laryngeal nerve injury and that can also affect the breathing process so the problems could be related to the local factors and sometimes the lower respiratory tract problem like patient with copd bronchiectasis and emphysema remember the pneumothorax and uncomplicated bronchial asthma is not the indication of doing the tracheostomy now after the indication we now study what are the complications of tracheostomy what are the complications of the tracheostomy complications are divided into three parts one is the immediate complication immediate complication occur during the operation of or while performing the tracheostomy and sometimes after the operation the complication are said to be intermediate and sometimes the complication could be late after months the immediate complication can cause bleed can rupture the vessel and the patient can bleed a lot sometimes local tissue can damage and sometimes patient can ha have apnea so to understand the immediate complication you remember as a b and c a means the patient can have apnea and this apnea occur because as we create an opening in the trachea the carbon dioxide immediately escapes out and you know that carbon dioxide is an important stimulus for respiration but when carbon dioxide escapes out the patient the respiratory stimulus is no more there so the patient can have apnea this is one point and patient sometimes while doing the tracheostomy air can escape into the major veins that can lead to the air embolism okay so the immediate complication in the form of apnea air embolism and bleeding and this bleeding occur because of the rupture of two very important vein one is anterior jugular vein another vein is inferior thyroid vein inferior thyroid vein these are the two veins which likely to be ruptured during the tracheostomy and that can cause bleeding and because the patient are, is undergoing tracheostomy he has very anxiety and the adrenaline is circulating in his blood a lot and the patient can have the cardiac arrest as well so the immediate complication are a b and c a means apnea or air embolism b means bleeding or c means cardiac arrest these are the immediate complications of tracheostomy then we will study what are the intermediate complication of the tracheostomy to understand the intermediate complication you remember d e f g h i d means it occurs after the operation is over after few hours or days the patient can have the displacement of the tube or dislodgement of the tracheostomy tubes this is one complication and the patient can have emphysema this emphysema is surgical emphysema by surgical emphysema i mean the while doing the tracheostomy air sometimes escapes out into the tissues so it can lead to the surgical emphysema and other complication intermediate complication is fistula formation and this fistula is tracheo esophageal fistula and tracheo arterial fistula this point you have to remember then we skip the g then h stand for hemorrhage this is secondary or reactionary hemorrhage 
occurring after 24 hour and the patient also can have infections infections occur in the form of tracheitis tracheobronchitis and that can lead to the tracheal necrosis tracheal crust formation and scab formation these are the intermediate complication intermediate complication you can remember as d e f g h i d means displacement or dislodgement of the tube e means emphysema which is surgical emphysema f stands for fistula it is tracheoesophageal fistula tracheoatrial fistula and h means hemorrhage secondary or reactionary hemorrhage i means infections it could be tracheitis tracheobronchitis and that can lead to tracheal necrosis and tracheal crust formation and scab formation then we have the late complication you can remember it as pneumonic best these are the best complication best means bleeding occur because of the erosion of the major vessel this is the one complication bleeding occurs in all the three this point you have to remember bleeding due to erosion of the major vessel and as stand for stenosis stenosis could be laryngeal stenosis laryngeal stenosis occur because of the perichondritis of the cricoid cartilage and stenosis of the trachea and t stand for tra tracheocutaneous fistula tracheocutaneous fistula fistula between the trachea and the skin these are the late complications so the complication of the tracheostomy is the immediate intermediate and late immediate you can remember a b c a for apnea or embolism b for bleeding due to rupture of the anterior jugular vein or the inferior thyroid vein c for cardiac arrest and intermediate complication d e f g h i already discussed late complication remember as best now we will study what are the types of tracheostomy so we have the high tracheostomy high tracheostomy and we have the low tracheostomy to understand it suppose this is the isthmus of the thyroid gland this is the isthmus of the thyroid gland and if the opening is created above the isthmus we call it as high tracheostomy if the opening in the trachea is done below the isthmus we call it as low tracheostomy and low tracheostomy is generally done at second third and fourth tracheal rings this is low tracheostomy usually we prefer doing the low tracheostomy we don't prefer the high tracheostomy because if we do the high tracheostomy there is a risk of perichondritis of the cricoid cartilage perichondritis of the cricoid cartilage so usually we don't prefer the high tracheostomy but one condition in which we do the high tracheostomy is in condition where we have to do the laryngectomy in patients with cl larynx cl larynx who require the laryngectomy we do the high tracheostomy this point you have to remember now after studying the types of tracheostomy now we take what are the tracheostomy tubes tracheostomy tubes are the metallic ones the non metallic ones and the mixed ones the mixed one are armored tubes armored tubes these are armored tubes okay the metallic ones are of having the double lumen the non metallic one having the single lumen okay the metallic one are made up of silver for example jackson tube we have it is made up of silver metallic tube could also be made up of titanium and uh, we have the jackson metallic tube we can also have fuller tube fuller metallic tube we also have durham durham's metallic metallic tube and we also have koenig koenig metallic tube these are the various metallic tubes we have the non metallic tubes are made up of polyvinyl chloride also we have the portex non metallic tubes we have the silicon silicone made up of silicone we have sometimes siliconized siliconized polyvinyl chloride tubes we have the rubber tubes we have the rubber non metallic tubes and we have the ciliastic tubes ciliastic tubes these are the various non metallic tubes so the non metallic tubes are further divided into non metallic tubes are further divided into cuffed 
curved and uncurved tracheostomy tubes. This uncurved one one we prefer them in children. Okay, and the curved one curved one the important point the curved non metallic tube should have high volume and should have low pressure because if the curved tubes have high pressure it can lead to the tracheal necrosis high pressure can lead to the tracheal necrosis which we don't want so the curved tracheostomy tube should have high volume and low pressure this point you have to remember and we don't prefer it in children we, uh, we prefer uncuffed tubes in children and we prefer the curved tracheostomy tube in those individuals where positive pressure ventilation is required this is one point where we prefer another in we also prefer in the individuals who have risk of aspiration and we also prefer them in unconscious patient while the uncovered one we prefer in the children we also prefer in those individuals who are returning from the icu to the wards where we have to do the tracheal suctioning we prefer the uncovered one and uncovered one we also prefer in the conscious patient so you have to remember this point so tracheostomy tubes are metallic non-metallic and mixed mixed or armor non-metallic or single human metallic or double human metallic one or jackson type made up of silver titanium which is made up of silver is jackson then we have the fuller durham and coenic and the non metallic one are made up of polyvinyl chloride also made up of portex silicone siliconized polyvinyl chloride rubber tube and ciliastic tubes and then tracheostomy tubes are also divided into fenestrated and without fenestration without fenestration fenestration we prefer in the children because of the but because of the fenestration sometimes the gastrointestinal secretions can escape through this fenestration and can lead to the risk there is risk of aspiration this is important point but fenestration with fenestration we the patient can speak despite the tubes presence of tracheostomy tubes no few points the curved tracheostomy tubes has to be deflated after every 2 hour and deflated for 5 minutes in this point you have to remember and another thing these tracheostomy tubes has to be changed daily has to be changed daily and secretions should be cleared and we do not change the tracheostomy tubes after 2 to 3 days is this point you have to remember now we will study few mcq regarding our topic first time mcq is tracheostomy is indicated in all except the options are tracheal stenosis bilateral vocal cord palsy foreign body in the larynx uncomplicated bronchial asthma i already told you uncomplicated bronchial asthma and pneumothorax are not the indication of tracheostomy so we can do the tracheostomy in tracheal stenosis we also do in bilateral vocal cord palsy we also do in the presence of foreign body in the larynx but we don't do in the bronchial asthma so the right answer is uncomplicated bronchial asthma we don't do the tracheostomy then a high tracheostomy is indicated in scleroma of the larynx multiple papillomatosis of the larynx bilateral vocal cord paralysis or ca larynx i already told you uh, we don't prefer the high tracheostomy but except one indication that is ca larynx in ca larynx where we require the laryngectomy we do the high tracheostomy so the right answer is ca larynx okay then another question all are true about tracheostomy tubes except this is another question answer the, the options are jackson tube has two lumens removal of the metallic tube in every 2 to 3 days cuff tube is used to prevent aspiration of the pharyngeal secretions and made up of titanium silver alloy yes jackson tube is a metallic tube so it has two lumens this point is true removal of metallic tube is done in every 2 to 3 days no i told you that removal of the metallic tube has to be done every daily not after 2 to 3 days so the right answer is this 
so cuff tube is used to prevent the aspiration of the pharyngeal secretions as this is true it is made up of titanium and silver this is also true that's it thank you if you like my video please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon thank you